Oh, well, hello there. Nice to see you. CMC Engineering wanted an entire video, all the episodes on how I made this neck look so fancy. And so, I was thinking, here they are, all in one video. It's gonna be a long one, so lean back, relax, get yourself your favorite drink, maybe some tasty snacks, crisps, and enjoy. Is that good? Hmm? Ah, yes, very good. So, it's finally time to start working on this neck right here. You might remember this neck from my first on the couch video and from my how to make a guitar kit, which was a video that I thought was a lot of fun to make and hopefully you loved watching it. Uh, I tried to have some sort of sense of humor in that video. But anyway, the thing is, what I'm gonna do to this neck is I'm gonna remove these frets because they are weird and nasty and I just don't really like them. I have better quality fret wire that I can put in. Another thing is that all of these slots are a little bit wonky. It might be hard to see. Uh, it took me actually a while to see it, but they are all a little bit slanted. I was also thinking, because I want to do something cool with this guitar, that I was going to put on black binding on this neck. So there's a lot of things that needs to be done. And so today, we're just gonna pull the frets on this, because that's the first step. And the proven method that I've seen a lot of people use is that they use a soldering iron, and they just heat up one fret, and they take it out that way. Now the reason why they're doing that is because if you heat up the fret, the metal will expand and it will make the break the glue bondage, and it will loosen up the glue, and it will be easier to pull out the fret without damaging the wood. That sounds logical, right? Well, the thing is, you don't know if your neck has frets that are glued in, so it might be pointless, depending on what sort of guitar you have. Obviously, if you don't know that, it's a safer option to heat up the frets and remove them that way. But the thing is, if you have a flat head on your soldering iron, it's fairly easy to move on the fret, but you can still very easily slip and burn your fretboard. And if you have maple fretboard, it will look horrible. If you have rosewood or a darker fretboard, it will still look bad, but it will not be visible from, you know, six meters away, which it will be on a maple fretboard. Anyway, you need to have a flat head and not a round one because a flat one is easier to not slip with than a round one, but it's still too, too easy to, to do that mistake. Another thing is these need to always have solder on them. Most people believe that it's because it will help the heat flow through the the piece of wire easier. And yes, yeah, sure, maybe it will, but mostly it's because these tips need solder to not get the coating that is on them damaged. And so it's a really ineffective way to work. A much better way, which is what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna show you, is to actually use your iron for your clothes and heat up the frets and pull them out and you can heat up a lot of frets and as you can see it's very very difficult for me to slip and like fall in between the frets it is a little bit easier up here but i don't think we will have any issues it's a safer smarter way to work and you don't need to waste a bunch of solder on keeping your tip safe so that it won't be damaged because you're using it for something that it's actually not intended to this means that we have to pop out the nut, but that's not very difficult to do. And as you can see, mine wasn't even glued in, so it actually just popped out like that. I was actually going to show you how to take it out, but it just fell out when I was touching it too. Yeah, sorry, that was not intended. Anyway, let's quickly remove these frets now. Okay, so my clothing iron is warming up and I have a knife and I have my fret end snippers and we're just gonna like pull these in to try and get in between and we're just gonna press in the knife and work our way through and we're just gonna take it slowly and go up the neck and so we're just gonna start off 
by warming up the frets like this. You don't have to have it on for super long, but as you can see, it's riding on the frets, not touching the neck. I don't have to be super careful and worried that I'm gonna do something stupid or that I'm gonna slip with my hand. I can just wiggle this back and forth like this and I can just move it across to try to get an even spread of the heat and it's gonna heat up the fret and we're gonna have to go back and forth a little bit to see where we're at. And obviously depending on you know the quality of the guitar and the neck and the wood and the frets you know all these things might make it easier or harder to take out the frets so just feel it a little bit loosen it up a little bit just feel it see what is happening what is not happening Go back, put on a little bit more heat. Just slowly you'll, you'll break it off like that. And I don't know if you can see that, but you'll get closer up once I'm done. Nothing tear out, no issues at all. Everything looks just the way I want it to look. And the good thing is you've already started the heat up of all the other frets. You can really go back and forth like this. So even though it doesn't help that much, you've already started the other frets and they've already gotten a little bit warm already. And then we just have to take the knife and go back in to just get in under the fret a little bit. Try not to slip like I just did, uh, if possible. And then just feel it a little bit. I think I need a little bit more heat. And we got the next thread out. No issues at all. Everything looks exactly the way we wanted to look. Perfect in every way. I'm gonna do the rest of the frets, or at least uh, a couple more, because I don't feel like you need to see me do this. 22 times So I'm down here at the very last end and I'm pulling out the very last frets and so far Not a single issue at all. Everything is going very smoothly and Something that I just want to point out except for you know, not only the fact that You know, I'm I'm, uh, I'm not getting any burns or slipping or having any issues of those natures The way metal works is that if you heat it up it takes a long time for it to heat up and then it slowly, you know, the heat will get away from it. So now I'm not only heating up the fret that I'm going to work on, I'm heating up the frets that I'm going to work off on after. And so I'm basically preheating them so that it will be even easier to take out once I'm done with the one I'm actually going to work on. And what's good about that is everything goes faster. And it's actually worked so well for me that I'm, I've been able to heat up frets and take out two frets at the same time. And you don't need to use a lot of pressure. It might look like I'm using force, but I'm, I'm really not. I'm really just letting the fret come out by itself. It's popping out and I don't know if you can see it, but there are no issues. And then I'm gonna feel the next fret and I can actually feel that, yeah, this one wants to come out too. And I don't need to put any heat on it. It's ready to go. And, and it's basically falling out almost. Yeah, there we have it. And the thing is, if you don't want to replace the frets, but you need to do some work or something, they're coming out perfect, basically. They're not crooked and bent and, and dinged and weird. I could put these frets back. I'm not going to do it because I'm not satisfied with the quality of these frets. Okay, so I'm at my last fret and I'm showing you this just because I know someone is going to ask about it because eventually you'll have just one tipping point like this. And yes, obviously this is where you might get burns on the fretboard or something like that, but I would still argue that it is easier to hold this over the fret 
without burning the fretboard than it is to hold a soldering iron and not slipping. You can just look down the neck from the side and move slowly to make sure that you don't wiggle side to side like that. And now the fret should be warm enough that we can just dig in our knife and break up the edge a little bit. And the reason why I'm using a knife is because the angle is smaller and then I can come in here and I can try to lift it up. And let's see. Yes, even the last fret worked perfectly. No issues. Everything looks super nice. I'm gonna film now as close as I can so that you can judge for yourself. There are some markings, but those are just because the tangs of the fret, so it looks a little bit zigzaggy. But don't mistake that for tear out because that's not what it is. Anyway. We're gonna plug all these holes. I've measured out and double checked and one positive thing is that this seems to be right and all of these are all slanted off. It's just a little bit but they're all basically almost a mil, not really, 75% of a mil slanted like this. What I think is that they cut the... Uh, they have some sort of machine and they cut this slot right here first and then the neck got bumped or something and the machine cut all the other without any adjustments and so they got all mixed up. Now there are a lot of ways you could fill these. Uh, you could use some sort of, you know, putty, uh, synthetic wood, clay thing or jig. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend that. You can fill them with super glue and with, uh, you know, dust from tree, like sand dust. Will probably not look very nice and it will shrink and yeah, I wouldn't recommend you doing it. You do things the way you want to. If you have veneer, and especially if you have, you know, veneer of a wood that is similar color, you could cut out small pieces and glue in. That's what I would have done, but I don't have any veneer. But I do have a lot of lollipop sticks, as you just saw. And, yeah, it's because I eat about, yeah, this many a day. That's obviously a joke, I hope you don't actually believe me there. This is 22 sticks, just like the frets, and I'm actually gonna put them down on a plank and run them through my planar thicknesser because these are about two mil thick or something like that and I've measured the holes and they are half a mil thick and uh, yeah need to get these down to where they are basically thin enough so yeah I'm going to show you how I do that but if you have something near you could go with that it's going to be easier than doing it this way uh, and hopefully the new frets will cover these. Okay, so I completely forgot to film this, but it wasn't that exciting, so hopefully you will forgive me. Here's a piece of wood, two pieces of wood actually glued together to make a perfect flat surface. And I put some double-sided tape on it and I stuck all my lollipop sticks down to it. And I'm gonna press them down a little bit like this to just make sure that they are really on there. And hopefully they are, and this one wants to pop up, but... Maybe I can force it a little bit. Gonna run it through my planar thicknesser now and uh, try to make them all become a little bit thinner. I am suspecting that this might not work, that I might have to figure out something else, but hopefully it will work because I feel like these are sticking up a little bit and they might be torn up and fly away, but I don't know, let's pray that that doesn't happen. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, we'll see. Basically is what I'm trying to say. I'm not gonna film pushing them through the planar thicknesser because I filmed, you know, me planing wood with it before and none of those shots are really that good and they never really show what I'm really doing in a good way that explains it well. You're just basically just seeing my hands moving a board, kind of a meaningless thing to do maybe. If you are curious about the planar thicknesser and you want me to do a video talking about, you know, straightening up wood and making it ready. Uh, you can watch my how to make a guitar body blank video. There's a little bit of it in there, but otherwise talk to me in the comments below and you know I can make a video about that because there isn't that much to say, but yeah, maybe it's important what little there is to say. So not all of them survived, but Hopefully you can see they're really thin now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the, these in uh, and because some of them didn't survive I'm gonna try to glue them in as far 
to the side like this so that maybe I have enough material left so that I can cover another fret as well. So let's just jump into gluing some of these in. I won't film uh, gluing in all of them, but a couple to see what happens. So a little bit of glue in the cavity, like so. And then we take our, our piece of wood and we just smack it in there. And it broke off, but that's actually okay because it got in there pretty well. And we can maybe even clean this up a little bit with a razor blade. Just move it up to one side and just let it pass along the fretboard because the, the fretboard is okay and that's where we're gonna play so you can just carve it away from there. I'm not gonna care that much about these ends because I am gonna put on binding but if you're not gonna put on binding you should be very careful and spend extra time making these edges look really nice. And once all of this has dried, we're gonna sand it, but that's gonna be in between this video and the next one. It looks kind of awful right now, but we're gonna recut this and put a fret in there, and I hope that it will cover most of it. Obviously, if you have frets that are like two mils off or something like that, then I would say that you're gonna have to do a really careful job with inlaying wood in the right orientation and really trying to find pieces that go together in a nice way. And it might actually even be better to just get a new neck or a new fretboard because it could be really difficult to do. You could obviously, you know, glue on a veneer or something, which I think I would have done if I didn't believe that I will be able to cover most of this up. I think that it will be a little bit wonky and weird if you're really close like this and you're really, really, really watching it to see for it. But if you're just holding the guitar in a natural way, far away from your face, I think it's gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna glue in a couple of more frets. So some of these are not uh, working for me because they're a little bit uneven. The trying to make all of them the same thickness didn't really work out. So I'm widening the slots just a tiny bit. And I know that this is maybe not the correct kind of blade to use, but it doesn't really matter because it's just, you know, like one third of a mil or something that I need widening. And this blade has the right thickness. And now I can fit them in. And I just need some glue. And I try to get as much as I can in there and let it squeeze out. Just take this and I press it in. And because it's snug and tight, I'll need a hammer to just bang it in the last bit. And it doesn't look that great, but hopefully once we sand it and even everything's out a little bit, it would look nicer. Okay, so all of the fret slots are now covered. And I know it looks messy. I think it looks messy too. You can tell me in the comments below that you think it looks messy too. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, this definitely needs to be leveled and sanded again. So I'm gonna wait for the glue to dry one hour, two hours, I don't know. I'm gonna go and do something else for a bit and then come back. We're finally gonna route the channel on the neck for the binding. Now, there are a lot of ways you can do this. And if you have a neck that you want to mod and put binding on, you might be tempted to do something weird, like put one of those routing bits that has a little channel cutter and run it along the neck. Well, the problem with that is the neck already has a radius, and so it's very easy to mess things up. So the way I do this is that I clamp it between two things, like this, and I make sure I have a flat surface, and a tiny little edge like this. And I just put my binding material on the edge, along the edge like this, and I feel it so that it lies flush with the piece of wood, or in this case, aluminium that is on top, and basically is flush with the edge. So that when I remove it, there is a little gap. And I hope you can see that little gap there. It's like a little ledge. 
So now that we route with our bit, it will hopefully work out great for us. This is also something you can make into a jig if you want to. I haven't done that because this is, you know, like the third time ever I have to do this, so it doesn't come up that often for me, basically. But maybe one day I will have to make a jig like this. So yeah, I'll make a video then about that. It will be super easy to do because you just need a couple of screws and two things that are straight and longer than your neck. Anyway, let's jump into it and get this done because after that we can remeasure the frets and can cut new lines in the fretboard for the new frets, which will be fun to install later. Okay, so I've adjusted my depth stop so that it will only cut as far down as the fretboard is. And now I'm just gonna run the bearing along the aluminium edge and let it cut away that tiny bit of amount that I need to create that new lip inside of the fretboard for the binding to sit in. And I'll go back and forth a couple of times and then I'll flip everything over and do the other side. It can be very fiddly to try and align these things up because especially feeling it, the edge and moving the neck and having everything clamped down and as you press here this will tend to move so you're gonna have to have a lot of patience and it's gonna be a little bit fiddly and irritating but after a couple of minutes of trying, especially when you've done it once already, it won't be that bad. I believe in you. Okay, so here's the neck right now. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but there is a little lip all around it. It doesn't look that good right now. It doesn't feel that good in the hand and have that sharp edge. But, you know, eh, there's nothing you can do about it. Might as well just go home. No, uh, we need to reshape this a little bit to make it, you know, a little bit nicer, make it a little bit more easy for the binding to move around here. And then we can uh, move on to the next part. So let's just quickly see what we're going to do about this. I have a file here that I've taken off the handle of. I will put back the handle once I'm done and I'm just going to clean up this edge a little bit, go over it like this, just a couple of times to make sure that it looks neat for the binding. So I put the handle back on. And now we can start reshaping this a little bit, round over here. If you want to, you can remove a line of wood all across here, but I don't think that's necessary. It depends obviously on your making something that is supposed to be maybe period correct or something. Then you might want to make sure that this has the exact right size and shape and everything. I'm just going along with whatever is happening, hoping that it will work itself out. So I've rounded it over a little bit more there than here so I'm just gonna... Another reason why we have to sh reshape this a little bit is because we have to remove the finish so that we will get to the bare wood. And also in my case, which you know might not be the same for you, this was actually sort of messed up and looked a little bit wonky from the factory. So, I want to take the opportunity to remove some of that finish and wonkiness. And a lot of it has already been removed because I have have sanded the entire neck. That I think that looks better. And then obviously, if we have some binding, it, it's going to be hard to show you because I don't, uh, I can't hold the binding in place because you need to shape the binding after the neck and not 
just hold it in place it's gonna break but it's basically gonna go on like that don't worry it will be done real soon I'm gonna take a break now drink some coffee wash my hands there's so much dust on them so yeah the neck is basically ready for binding what we need to do is we need to sand it a little bit more because we need to get everything finalized and good and ready to go for the binding uh, I'll do that off camera because you don't need to see me sand uh, or maybe you do uh, but then you'll have to ask for it no seriously next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna re cut the slots for the frets we are gonna measure out the frets again and recut them and the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna establish a center line and the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna measure at the first and last fret find the middle in between and then draw a line to create a center line so I'm just quickly gonna do that because you don't need to see me draw a line or at least I don't think you need to. And then we are just gonna measure out the frets and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I have this tool from Crimson Guitars that lets me do it real quickly. You don't need that tool. If you don't have it, you can look up the measurements online. But it's a special kind of ruler. It lets you do things fairly quickly. And this is one of those things that I feel is an okay sort of thing to buy because it makes something that can take a lot of time because you need to measure and remeasure and measure again a bunch of times to make sure you're doing it correctly this saves you a lot of time because it's a ruler all the frets are already marked out so yeah if you're gonna buy something from crimson guitar it should be that ruler okay so here's the neck right now and as you can see uh, I forgot to tell you that I put masking tape all over it but maybe you could s see that in the first clip but anyway and I've drawn the center line and some of you might have key lines and see that they're not correctly lining up with the middle of the dots at least not all the time but I'm I trust my own center line more than I trust the dots because there's nothing that says that they are actually in the middle especially since nothing else on this neck has you know been the way it's supposed to be uh, why would they be but now, to double check things, I'll use a gallops and I'll just measure to the center light on one side, like so, and then flip it over to the other side and measure it. And I'll do that, not at every thread, but every here and there, to just hold it up there, push it and flip it over and check it. And I'll do a little bit more on the camera, but I'll just to show you. So I put it there. And I push it up. And I flip it over. And I check it. And I can see that everything looks the way it's supposed to look. And nothing is weird and strange. My central line has split the neck evenly into two rows. So now we can measure out the frets. Here is my Crimson Guitar fret ruler. Uh, I hope you can see it. But basically it's just a metal, is it a piece of metal? You can make one of these super easily, you do, I mean like if you really don't want to buy it. To me it's like, ah, uh, it was a nice investment to make something that can take a lot of time go faster. And it has uh, three, four actually, scale lengths on it. So it's a ruler of four. It has a PRS and a Fender and a Gibson and then it has something else that I don't actually know what it is. I think it's just a smaller one to be like, ah, if you want to build something that is even smaller than um, Gibson. Shorter is what I mean, not smaller. What the hell? Come on. Ugh. Anyway, we're going to use the Fender one. So let's just jump into it. Okay, good. So this is what I've done. It might be hard to see and if it is I'm sorry but it's difficult to find the right angles to film things in where you can see everything the center line here I've matched this up to the center line and it's held down with double-sided tape I put a piece of tape here 
because one thing that I don't like about using this is that things can go too fast, which is not obviously not a, you know, a fault of the tool, it's force of habit of using something. But anyway, what that means is that I put a piece of masking tape on and I write what scale it is I'm going to use, which is the 25.5, and then I make an arrow pointing towards the scale, so that I don't accidentally tape down the wrong thing and, you know, mess things up. I've done that before and then wondered why things aren't, you know, working, and then I've had to switch out the neck for something else and use that neck for something else, you know, because it's like, ah, it's the wrong scale for the wrong body. You know, that's the sort of thing that can happen. It is put down to the center line, so the center line goes along here, and I've made sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. The way these works is that the line here that is for the nut, which you can't really see, but it says nut here, it goes up against the inner cut of the slot for the nut. That's why it says nut. But you basically have two edges here. You know, the back edge, which is mostly to the headstock, and the inner, which is facing the fretboard. And you'd line it up with the one facing the fretboard. I have this little tiny block here of plexiglass, and it's perfectly square. I made sure of that. And I have this knife here. And I know that this is like custom tools, but this is super easy to make. You just need a piece of steel that you can sharpen one side into an angle. And I have two of these for depending on which hand I'm going to work with and which angle I'm cutting in. So you should make one that works for you. And if you're right-handed, you're going to have to flip everything that I'm doing around and mirror it. And if you're left-handed like me, you can work like I'm doing. Oh, so I have this edge here and the edge uh, is facing away from the block, so I'm putting the side next to it that is flat. I hope this makes sense. So now I can just line this up with the first mark of the fret, and I can make my first cut, and then I can move on to the next, and third, and because this is facing the middle, and it's perfectly centered, and this is perfectly square. I am cutting these and I am making everything perfect. So I just need to make sure that these cuts will line up perfectly, basically. And then when I take this off, I will have scored lines that are perfectly straight and perfectly squared up to the center line and in the perfect place. And I can just cut the rest of the way across the fretboard where this ruler has been taped down. Again, here you can see a close-up of the scored lines. Okay, so slight issue occurred because we have a tiny bit of wood underneath that is, you know, weird pieces of wood that aren't supposed to be there. And we're basically trying to recut on those. They want to guide things to be off-center again. And so I can't trace the line over the way I was going to do it, which was with a knife like this, because it guides the blade, it doesn't work. So what I have to do is I have to use this, and I have to line everything up perfectly, and then I have to use my old trusty fret saw that I made in one of my Guitar Builders Life Hacks. If you haven't watched all of those videos, uh, you have something to do in the weekend. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, this is a great tool, because it has like a guideline for how deep to cut the frets and everything. I'm gonna have to use that, I'm gonna have to go in like this and line everything up and make sure that nothing is doing anything wrong and just carefully, carefully, like this, go in and recut the frets. And it's gonna take a long time to do because, <sighs> because of the mess that is underneath. In At this point I'm actually considering maybe I should have just planed off the entire fretboard and replaced it with something else because this is actually turning out to be a little bit of a hassle and a nuisance for me and I don't like to have to spend a bunch of extra times doing something that feels silly. But anyway, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try to do this, I'm gonna hopefully not have to re-saw and re-plug any of the old fret slots because that would be very annoying. Because of all the issues I'm having, I need to establish the other half of 
the line again while I'm cutting it so that's why I'm going back and forth I'm having a lot of issues right here to make sure that everything works out great because the blade is always being guided towards the old problem which would mean that the upper part gets fixed uh, where the thicker strings are but the lower part where the thinner strings are which I know this sounds maybe weird to you but it's because that's the one facing away from me gets messed up and so it will get crooked frets everywhere and that's why I have to do things the way I'm doing it right now because nothing is really working for me right now and it just goes to show that you should uh, throw trash in the bin and not waste your time and effort on cheap nasty crap sorry if that sounds mean-spirited but I'm actually kind of getting angry right now <sighs> okay so all the slots have been caught down uh, and yeah they're actually not 100% perfect because I had issues here and there and yeah I'm actually really angry right now but I'm trying not to let it show but yeah this neck is more problem than it's worth they are better than what they were when I got the neck and what tiny little bit of um, issues I'm having I hope I can maybe get out when I put the frets on and I filed them down and make them thinner on the side where the issue is anyway that's the end of this video in the next one we're gonna put binding on this neck and yeah I'm gonna go take a break do something else for a bit so I don't know when we'll put binding on this one but I definitely need a break because I feel myself getting angry I would say that this is something that is, you know, you shouldn't do this if you're a beginner, because you get just as mad as I am. Um, now I'm going to also take away all this tape, because obviously we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to uh, sand the fretboard, I think, because I have so many failed little marks on it, which uh, hopefully will disappear, but if they don't... Oof. Yeah. Mm. Um, Alex is actually not here right now because he is too angry over the fret slots and the cutting. I'm not um, angry. Oh, tell him something else. I don't know. Oh yeah, sorry. Just get the video but done. Okay. He's not angry. Um, and he's not here. Um. Anyway, um, he's asked me to take over because he's um. Um, anyway, in this video, we are going to put the binding around the neck, and yes, I don't know, um, let's begin to put the binding on. It's fairly easy, so even I, who is actually a male male, and who's not really into this, will know how to do it. So the first thing we have to do is scuff off the binding because sometimes when you buy it it's shiny and it can be kind of hard to glue down so with just a little bit of sandpaper and moving along one side of the binding you don't want to scuff up the other side because that's where the outside will be and it's not a big deal you can buff it back and polish it up to a nice finish on the outside later if you need to but we're just gonna scuff up one side to make it a little bit easier to um to glow it down and as you can see it goes fairly quickly you don't have to be an expert. The next step is to start gluing down the binding. So put a dab of glue on the neck where the fret slots are not and hold down the binding where you want it to go 
and add just a little bit of tape, like so. Move on to the next. Try to not add glue where the slots you've cut are, because you don't want to um, fill them up with glue. Yes. Mm. And a couple of drops will do good because the pressure of the tape and try to really stick it down a little bit forceful. Obviously not so much that something breaks, but get a tight connection if you can. Will help spread the glue. And if you get some glue that zips out on the sides, don't worry. We are going to have to sand everything later and make sure that it... I sand kind of like a robot. Hmm. It's strange. It's the first time I ever record myself. I hope you like my my first video. And uh, and I am a little bit nervous. Hmm. So you just have to go like this down the neck and just try to be careful so that you don't overdo it with the glue. Just try to use the tape as as a um, as a clamp, basically. And as you can see, we're going down the entire way. All right, so I've moved up to here. I've um, made a mark on the tape, which maybe is a little bit hard to see, but it's basically where I've stopped the gluing because now we're going to heat up the binding with a heat gun and try to shape it so that it lies snugly along here. And we're going to try to do this with as little heat as possible. So we're going to take our heat gun and we're going to try to face it away from where the glue is and apply it quickly so that we don't get too much. When you see that it loses a little bit of its shape, that's when you need to Apply some pressure and see if you can move it. And I'm going to use my hands and I'm going to use a screwdriver because they're smooth and they are easy to work with. To try and press it in place. This can be a little bit fiddly. But just hold it in place and heat it up again. And the reason why I'm using a screwdriver is because I want to smooth it out, but I don't want to leave any fingerprints in it because when you heat it up, it might create fingerprints. And you have to just work it back and forth like this until it smoothly fits. I'll be back real soon.
Mm, yes, so I don't know if you can see it very well, but the binding is in its place and I have a bunch of tape and everything just looks kind of, it all looks kind of messy, but once the glue has dried, which will only take, let's say 10 minutes, but we're going to wait for maybe half an hour or something, just to be sure, we can take it off. It's going to look... It's gonna look as good as this neck possibly can look. So while the glue is drying, there are a couple of things that maybe could be good to know, to think about while you're doing this. And one thing is that it's near impossible. I don't know if you can see it, but it's near impossible not to get glue on your fingers. And that's very annoying because super glue, it's annoying. Yes. Hmm. Next thing is, because you have to work quickly, a good thing to try to remember to do is to have small pieces, strips of masking tape ready so that you can put on a little bit of glue and then just press the binding in place, take a piece of tape, put it in place, make sure everything looks the way it is, move on to the next bit where you put on some glue and stick it down with a piece of tape. And so having a nice surface to do this and a place where you can put down 15 pieces of tape um, that are about like maybe a thumb's length is a good idea. So you don't have to roll out a new piece and put it down. Will save you time and will help if you have Super glue that it dries very quickly. So yes, keep that in mind. Was that good? Yeah, that's fine, I suppose. So here we have the neck now and everything is looking all right. I'm just gonna dab a tiny bit of glue along the top here, just to fill any small little gaps that might be here that I am not seeing and I'm using a very very tiny amount so it should dry fairly quickly and sink in fairly all right and now while we wait for that to dry we can come in with something sharp and start to try to match up this edge here so that things look right. I'm going to try to do this in a way so that you can see what I'm doing, which is actually harder because it means I have to hold things in a way that I'm not used to. Not that I'm used to, you know, working with wood at all. And the same on this side. And take it slowly. And just feel with your finger and make sure it's to the point where you can't feel any gap in between. Something like that. Now I'm just going to leave this so that the glue that we just put on can dry. So the neck is pretty much done now. It has the binding and everything is the way it's supposed to be. Um, there are two things um, left to do. And one thing is to go over the side edge here where the binding meets and take a razor blade and smooth out that edge to make it nice and perfect so that it will be even nicer when we sand the neck and the next thing that needs to be done um, that I'm gonna leave to Alex to do because I'm afraid of the belt sander you don't use a belt sander come on you know that yeah okay uh, anyway he's gonna have to do it and the thing is the neck is actually warped and so we have to sand the fretboard in order to make it nice and ready for 
with the frets but we also need to clamp it down and adjust our sanding to level it out so that this spot right here gets a little bit lower it's not a perfect neck in any way but with a little bit of forced sanding we can make it perfectly straight again or at least closer to perfectly straight than it is and it's a part of the sanding and there is no real point in explaining it more than you sand the neck with the sanding beam the way you're going to do to get in the radius and you just force it a little bit more on the high spots and you check it with a ruler and you just go over it and make sure it's flat all the way so you don't have any weird high spots it's really annoying um but i'm not gonna do it he's gonna do it i mean when he comes back he's gonna do it here's the neck right now it looks it looks okay and here's the other side there is only one small issue we've had um actually there's only like two or three issues we've had and one of them is that we've had a little bit of tear out right here somewhere you can see um i'm not able to sand down that far because then i would have to recut the slots and i don't want to recut the slots because that means i have to take off the binding and as you might be able to tell this neck is more issue than i feel like i want it to be anyway the other issue we have is that by having to re you know shape the neck i have gone down into the fret marker a little bit so if you see there there's a, like a little blob that's actually the the side dot uh sticking through and luckily it only happened a little bit on one place um and it's a little bit annoying but <sighs> honestly right now i don't care i didn't think about the fact that the neck was warped or rather i didn't check for that which is a mistake you should probably check for that before you start doing all this i might also be that the neck actually warped between when i got it and now you know because i took it apart and i left it in a box so i don't know if the neck actually came to me warped because i didn't notice any of that when i unboxed the guitar but I have measured the water content of the body and I've measured the water content of this neck which I did uh, two weeks before making this video which will be three weeks when you see this video because I'm aiming for this to be my uh, last video of this series for now and being a Sunday video and the body had actually I think it was if I remember correctly now somewhere around 30 percent water which is really annoying because i don't like that at all and the neck was at 15 percent uh, and i don't like that either i don't think you can make a neck if it's not below 10. i think you would need to dry the wood then it's uh, just you can't do that but um I think it's gone a little bit drier now because I've been trying to dry it up, force it to dry a little bit and I have a meter like this right here and we could actually just stick it in the neck and see what happens. So you just have to press it in at a place with the grain and I'm not getting any reading. Yeah, it's um, not giving me any reading. Never mind. Anyway, I've sanded the neck up to 400 grit and it's really nice and smooth. I haven't sanded the rest of the neck, so if you think the binding looks a little bit dull and boring, it's because that. I'm going to do that later. The fretboard needs to be sanded and be nice and smooth because we're going to put in frets and it's going to be really hard to get in between the frets to sand. You can obviously do that. You just have to make a sanding block that is really thin, you know, so that you can basically move like this. And that's sort of annoying to have to do. You have to mask off all the frets so you don't accidentally bump into them and scratch them. Also very annoying. But anyway, the neck is ready for frets. 
I have some Stumac Fritz right here. Um, they're, I think, the vintage Fritz, if I remember correctly. If you want to know if it matters, uh, ask in the comments below because um, then I'll check. Let's just jump into bending the frets and cutting them to size. And then we can um, smack them right into the neck. This intro is too long. Okay, so here we have my fret bender or whatever they are called. This is a really cheap thing I bought off like Amazon or eBay. I think actually it was eBay because um, I try to avoid Amazon. I have it clamped here in my vise, so that I don't have to fiddle with it and hold it weirdly. And you're gonna see real soon why not having to fiddle or anything is important. You could obviously build some sort of base for this to hold it in place. I haven't done that, but the way this works is you have a crank on the back here that you move to pull the fret. And it's basically super simple. You can build one of these. It has this wheel here. And what you have to do is you have to make sure you have enough pressure to make the wire be bended as it goes through thing and then we just have to move this enough for when it so it can pass through a little bit this and now it's in we can press it down a little bit and you have to do it with the tang up because if you do it the other way it will be bent the wrong way and now we can just roll it through and as you can see it gets a slight curve push into it and we have to do two lengths of this because i think we're gonna need more than one for a neck that's usually how it goes and now we can hold this piece up to the neck and we can see that it is actually already pretty close but it's not close enough. So we have to go back here and we have to adjust this, push it down a little bit more, put this in and make sure it is really straight in there and that it's not being pulled to the side or going in crooked because that would make the whole thing not straight and bend off to the side and that's not what we want we want it to be straight and just match up the radius of the fretboard so yeah be careful but it's not overly complicated and if it gets a little bit slanted to the side like this has a little tiny bit uh, it's not a problem but if it gets like as you know bent like this is right now but also on the side then you have an issue now you might have to go back and forth with this a couple of times to match it up you just match it to either a radius block that you send the neck with or you check it with the neck and obviously depending on if you have a, a fretboard that changes the radius as it goes up you're gonna have to do this a lot and reshape it as you go but most of the time you have one radius for the entire fretboard and so you only have to match it once. Now we're done with this and we can start cutting the frets. So what we need is our neck and I have it clamped at the headstock so it won't move, at least not too much. And then we have our fret wire and we have a tang that is a with a cutter head like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to oversize these a little bit. So I'm going to put it in just temporarily as far up as it goes so right up next to the binding and I'm gonna mark out or not actually mark out but I'm gonna cut maybe let's say three mils too much like so and that's because we have about a mil a mil and a half of binding on each side and so having just it stick out a little bit extra on both sides like this as you can see maybe hopefully is gonna be what we need because we have to take away some of the tang so that it will overlaps over the binding basically now obviously that depends on what sort of 
style you're going for with the binding and the frets, but I'm going for the overhanging fret thing because for some reason, maybe it has to do with, you know, what is considered to be a classic guitar or something like that. That's my uh, view of how it should look. But if you want the little tab things that I've seen Gibson have, then you can definitely do that as well. So just make sure that it's a little bit in. And when I say in, I just mean like barely. So you don't have to like force it or anything. A good thing is to use a longer handle because if you have to do this a lot, you you, you have to do if you want to get really good at it, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to cut a lot of frets. And the longer handle you have, the further out you can hold on the pliers to cut, like out here. And that means that you will have more power with your hands than you would otherwise. One thing more to say before I just jump into the next part and do all the fret cutting myself is, you see how it's like T-shaped, or maybe you don't? It's basically T-shaped. You have the two sides of the fret and then the, the like tang that goes down. So it's basically a T. Try to cut it straight with the tang and not angle it in a weird way so that it looks good basically okay so all the frets are cut to you know an approximate size they're all laying out nice and neat now and i just wanted to show you that this is how much spill i got these two pieces right here okay so the next step here is just taking each fret just one at a time going down the neck and just removing about a mil of the tang so that it fits inside. I have to remove a little bit more on each side because the fret is oversized. And you can do this in a lot of ways. There is a specialized tool for this that a lot of people will use, but I don't have it. And you, could, you don't need it. You can use a Dremel or you could use a file and just remove it super quickly. It doesn't have to be extremely perfect as long as the back of the top of the fret is flat so that it lies flush with the wood of the fretboard. You could use a file and just clean everything up. But what I'm doing right here, as you can see, is I'm actually using my sharpening station, for the wheel of the finer grit, to just quickly take off the edge and it's maybe not the best way to do this but i don't have that specialized tool and maybe one day i'll get one uh, because having the right tool for the right job is always the best way to go it might be the right tool for the job but this does work there's a lot of ways you can do this and as long as you're being careful and using like safety precaution i'm wearing eye protection and ear protection in this clip even though you can't see my face and yeah, I'm being very careful and making sure that I'm not doing something that is either bad for, you know, my health, like safety thing, but also that I'm being careful so that I'm not ruining my frets. You can blast through this pretty quickly, actually. You don't have to spend hours on hours doing this. Okay, so all the frets are now cut to the right length and I've made sure that they fit within the binding. Super easy to do. You just hold it up to the slot and look and see if there is enough space between the binding and the tang. And a good thing is to probably try to have a little bit more space, so maybe like a half a mil or something like that on each side, so that it just is enough place for like glue or something like that. And so now there's only one thing left to do uh, before we do the rest. It didn't make any sense. But that's because when I said there's only one thing left to do, I realized there were more than one thing to do. And the first thing is we're going to hammer in the frets. And I'm going to use my little carpenter hammer. It has a nice flat head and it's neat and nice. And I do have a fret hammer. Sorry, I almost smashed my own camera there. That was a stupid joke. But my niece loves that hammer and she's run off with it. So I don't know where it is. She is a four-year-old, you know, they do what they do and that's what they're doing. So yeah, let's just jump into putting in these frets. And it's going to be super easy. All we need to do is we need to just take one fret at a time and just apply a tiny bit of glue and then just push it into place, make sure it looks right. And then just tap it in with small little blunts 
you can use basically anything that is a smaller sized hammer to do this you don't need to go overboard and just you know tap all the frets in place and then make sure there are no gaps or anything weird we need the glue to make sure that the fret end where the binding is and there is no tang doesn't get lift up because that can be a space for your string to get caught especially the higher e and that's you know like a disaster if you're playing live or something like that if you're playing and all of a sudden one of your string is you know caught on something and it can't move and you're basically just playing maybe you know the 17th fret on your high e string over and over again no matter what else you're playing that could be a complete disaster so it's really important to make sure that all the little ends that sticks over the binding are neat and nice and that they truly are stuck down so nothing can get in under we have all these sharp edges of the fret tanks and we need to cut them off because as you can see i have a banding on my finger and it's because i accidentally cut myself on them and the thing is you have to put a band-aid on immediately because you don't want to get blood on your newly sanded fretboard because it's going to be hard to get out don't put super glue in your wound i've seen uh, a certain person do that here on youtube and i just want to say that you can actually like get blood infection doing that so it's not a very smart idea to do um so don't do that just put a band-aid on and let it heal like it normally would do anyway i'm just taking my fret and nipper that you've seen earlier and i'm just cutting as close as i can and then i'm taking a file and i'm just moving the file down and i'm filing down and only down because i don't want to accidentally pull the fret out of its socket and here is the neck now Wah. as you can see all the frets are in and yeah I, I need to do a little bit of cleanup i need to you know smooth out the edges and make them perfect and all of that but that's you know minor detail uh that i'll do on the side and not in this video i also need to clean up some of the super glue that has spilled out on the side a little bit it looks a little bit messy but I'm going to clean that up and then I'm going to sand the entire neck and lacquer it. But I'm going to do that later down the line. Uh, I'm not sure when because I want to think about what I want to do with the body first and make sure that this neck matches it. I'm also thinking that maybe I should put some sort of collar on the fretboard. Maybe that could be fun, you know, to make it like a, I don't know, a little bit reddish or uh, orange in color just a hint not you know solid like see-through something uh, so that it matches the back of the neck a little bit better but also because it might be fun I, I i have no idea i'm not sure what to do but that's something i'm thinking of i'm also um you know i'm thinking that i'm gonna clear coat the neck but I'm also thinking that maybe I will reshape the neck because as you know I already have one of these guitars the one I used for the kit build of this guitar or that I'm using as a kit yeah so what I'm thinking is that it would be fun if it was a little bit different than that one because it's you know not very fun to have two guitars that are exactly the same guitar the only difference is the color I'm actually lying that's super cool I want like 12 more Stratocasters yeah because just having 12 isn't enough for me but if i have 12 more i have a lot more and they can all be the same guitar just different colors no seriously i think i'm gonna reshape the back of the neck is what i'm trying to say um i'm thinking of a v-shape because i don't think i have a guitar with a v-shape and so that might actually be interesting to have you know see what happens but anyway it's gonna be the end for now on this neck because yeah i need to think a little bit and i also feel like now it's been you know an entire week basically of one video a day and though i like to do it that way i feel like now it's time to take a break and focus on something else uh we do have other things to make you know the channel isn't just about building guitars even though that's a very big part of it but yeah see you in the next video when i'm doing something completely different maybe i have no idea
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to press the like button, the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay awesome and cool, and go and enjoy the sun.